tonight. A biker brawl breaks out and a bar that's been around for nearly 70 years was then shut down. Yeah, this all happened in Plainville where just today the state suspended the operations of Central Cafe on West Main Street. Channel 3's Matthew Campbell has the story. Just a year ago, Central Cafe was basking in the glow of being awarded Plainville's best neighborhood bar. Tonight, this sign hangs next to it. They're closed, possibly for good. Some patrons got injured and uh, ambulance were called. Vinneth Keola owns 50 West next door and says what happened last Thursday was a first. They were just in a fight that broke out, that's all I know. The state is calling it a motorcycle gang brawl. I saw many motorcycle members. I don't know whether they were gangs or not, but there were a lot of motorcycle members that were here, yes. Police say two patrons were hurt, and while there were no arrests, they're still investigating. The State Department of Consumer Protection also got involved, and days later, they slapped Central Cafe with the suspension. We reached out to the owners who tell Eyewitness News some of the allegations were exaggerated, and they emphasized they're not a biker gang bar. They've been great to us. They've been helpful, and they've been very welcoming. Keola says this one incident is not a reflection of the business he knows. You don't want to see that at all. I mean, you want to see good operating businesses next to you. So I'm hoping that they can fight this battle and hopefully we open with, uh, with a better, you know, business structure. Hi, I'm Black Dragon. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Black Dragon Biker TV. And welcome to another edition of Black Dragon Biker News Network, Biker News You Can Trust. So you saw the video, it's kind of interesting. A motorcycle club gets involved with another motorcycle club at a bar room and they get in a fight. It was the Outlaws Motorcycle Club versus the Diablos Motorcycle Club. Uh, there was a couple slight injuries. Nobody chose to really speak to the police about it or make any kind of report about it. There were no arrests made and everybody went their separate ways. Yet, a family lost their business and perhaps their ability to run a 70-year-old business ever again. And what made that happen? Since that family obviously wasn't involved in a motorcycle, quote unquote, motorcycle gang fight, biker gang fight. The restaurant didn't fight anybody, it didn't beat up anybody. So what on earth could make the restaurant have to shut down because of something that happened between the patrons in that restaurant? So we look at it a little bit closely, a little more closely to find out what actually happened there. And the reason that it's important to me is that as you think about all of the uh, things that are coming down on motorcycle clubs in general, the motorcycle only stops uh, on the highways. Motorcyclists being pulled over and, and frisked and all kinds of things that are going on. What we call motorcycle and motorcycle club profiling. We think that if we're watching this, man, this is moving closer and closer and closer to the laws that are happening in Australia. For motorcycle clubs, especially those that are deemed subversives, are having a, a difficult ability to, to move and associate uh, with one another in that, uh, in that country. And we wouldn't think that guilt by association laws would ever be passed down in America, but yet we can see it happening right in front of our faces if we pay attention. In Plainsville, Connecticut, the Department of Consumer Protection has issued a suspension for a Plainville bar after a motorcycle gang fight broke out. So that's what we saw in the video. But the Department of Consumer Protection has issued a suspension. The Department of Consumer Protection has said that that bar, by being open, is, uh, is, is dangerous to consumers. So on Tuesday, it issued that suspension for Central Cafe located on 54 West Main Street. The suspension, come, the suspension comes after a fight broke out among the motorcycle gang members. Two people were injured, there were no arrests. The bar owner said some of the allegations were exa exaggerated and emphasized that 
they are not a biker gang bar. We even saw on the window that they had a sign that said, no colors, no cuts, no support gear. They emphasized that they were not a biker gang bar. They said that things were exaggerated about them. And even the business next door said that what happened in their bar was a first. Well, one fight broke out in their bar. And he said it was a first. He's next to them. And now all of this. The Department of uh, Consumer Protection Commissioner, Michelle Siegel, said patrons in Connecticut should be able to feel safe when they visit liquor establishments in our state. And this type of incident puts their safety in jeopardy. We take these matters very seriously at DCP, and I look forward to a resolution. And just a year ago, Central Cafe was basking in the glory of being awarded Plainville's best neighborhood bar. But now their club is shut down, their, their bar is shut down, perhaps indefinitely. So you can't really glean a, a, a lot from the, that, that news article. It, it just says two biker gangs got in a fight. So if we look at the State of Connecticut Department of Consumer Protection order, we kind of get into the meat of what really happened and how this bar came to be closed down. In the matter of Central Cafe, 54 West Main Street, Plainsville, Connecticut, Shirley M. Papayo, Permittee, Big Dog Entertainment, LLC, is the backer, permit number LCA 6715, May 21st, 2019. Summary Suspension Order. This premises operates under a cafe liquor permit issued by the Department of Consumer Protection. It operates under the trade name Central Cafe. This permit was first issued by DCP on April 11, 2006. We find that on Thursday, May 16, 2019, Central Cafe was the scene of a motorcycle gang brawl, which resulted in two patrons sustaining injuries and numerous motorcycle operators recklessly fleeing the scene. Specifically, a, prelim a preliminary investigative report completed by the Plainsville Police Department indicates that the entire evening shift of the police department responded to the bar fight between dueling motorcycle clubs at the premise. So they were already mad because uh, the whole police department had to show up. Upon arrival, officers observed numerous motorcyclists wearing known gang insignia specifically some individuals wearing black leather vest with the devil faces and the inscription Diablos, and others wearing black leather vests with white lettering reading Outlaws. The police know the Diablos and the Outlaws to be dueling outlaw motorcycle clubs. Up to 20 motorcyclists were observed fleeing the premises at a high rate of speed and driving over lawns, driving down the wrong side of the road, and driving around other vehicles in an unsafe manner all while disobeying officers' signals. Inside the premise, officers observed one patron bleeding profusely from a deep laceration on the right side of his head. This same patron also had a human bite mark on his arm. His head injuries are consistent with being hit by a blunt object. He claimed that he was hanging out and was then jumped, but refused to provide additional details. A second patron was bleeding slightly from a laceration on the right side of the head. This patron was known to police as an associate of the outlaws, uh, which means that he wasn't actually an outlaw, and refused to cooperate with police. An anonymous witness ultimately informed police that members of the outlaws were on the outside patio of the premises when a significant number of Diablos drove into the parking lot very fast quickly disembarked from their motorcycles and ran toward the patio. The individuals then jumped the fence that enclosed the patio and began attacking the outlaws. This was a, uh, uh, a uh, who said this? This was a, an anonymous witness. Love those anonymous witnesses. Although the Diablos and some outlaws initially fled the scene, several outlaws remained and yelled obscenities at the police. More members of the outlaws arrived, whom the police believed to be reinforcements in the case. So the situation escalated. 
Several other motorcyclists were observed slowly driving by the premises, who the police believed were Diablos, who had taken off their vest and were watching the premise. To secure the scene, the Plainsville police ultimately had to request and receive mutual aid from surrounding towns. So uh, they called in everybody. After uh, securing the premises, the police contacted permittee Shirley Papayo, who voluntarily agreed to shut down the bar for the evening. Seems like she was cooperating. The police informed the bar manager, Roger Papayo, of the order, and he complied. Mr. Papayo acknowledged that he is friends with numerous members of the outlaws. Ah, mistake number one. The police stated to Mr. Papayo that it appears that the central it appears that the central cafe is being operated as a gang bar. And Mr. Papayo replied, Yeah. Mistake number two. In a letter to Liquor Control Director John Suchi, Plainville Chief of Police, Matthew Katina reports that he is aware of two similar inc recent incidents at this premise involving motorcycle gang violence. He describes the circumstances as a volatile and dangerous situation and states that it is not likely that we have seen the last of this type of behavior at this location. In an email from Chief Katana, to Plainsville Town Manager Robert Lee, a copy of which was also provided to Director Suchi, Chief Katana highlighted the events of May 16 with the town leadership because they encapsulate the intensity and the seriousness of this incident and similar incidents we are encountering. Add to this, Central Cafe is welcoming the gang members in with their colors displayed. He moreover noted that I do not get the impression that the current manager of the Central Cafe, Robert Papayo, is police friendly, nor well equipped to deal with the crowd he had last night or previously. It is common knowledge at this point that Papayo has friends in the Outlaws motorcycle gang. He actually, his actual involvement with the gang has not been determined. So his friends, but his actual involvement with the gang has not been determined. Additionally, Chief Katina detailed more explicitly the broad-ranging danger these types of motorcycle fights create when the police break up biker crowded, uh, biker, oh, when the police break up a biker crowd is what they meant to say, just after a violent assault, we experience motorcycles driving recklessly from the scene, putting on a new, uh, on a show of defiance. The riders last May 16th were shouting at the police, profanities, and threats. This type of activity presents a very real danger to the involved parties, the, poli the police, but even more so to the innocent people who happen to be walking and driving by when the mass exodus occurs. Therefore, we find that the May 16th, 2019 brawl between two known dueling outlaw motorcycle clubs within the premise in conjunction with reports of recent similar incidents and the knowledge that the bar manager is affiliated with one of the motorcycle clubs in perils public safety and demonstrates the need for better control of the uh, premises by the permittee, backer, or their agents. Based upon the foregoing, DCP finds that the public health and safety and welfare imperatively requires imperatively requires emergency action in accordance with section 4-182C of the Connecticut General Statutes and orders your cafe liquor permit suspended immediately and premises closed pending proceedings for revocation of your permit or other action. State of Connecticut, Department of Consumer Protection, Michelle Siegel, Commissioner of Consumer Protection, Chairperson Liquor Control Commission. So, what do we see there? We see very interesting things happen. One, a conversation with a police officer. And what people should know about 
talking to the police is there's no friendly conversation with them. There's no passing time and, hey, how you doing? A little simple thing such as, do you have friends in the outlaws? Yeah, I got a few buds. Can turn into getting your whole establishment shut down. It looks like this place has become a biker gang bar operated by the outlaws. How did he say yeah? Yeah? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. That verbiage was used to shut his bar down. And I guarantee you, if that bar opens up again, uh, it's going to have, it's gonna have uh, mandated security. It, you will see that, the, that those no color signs will be strictly enforced. The whole complexion of that bar will change. And this is not people going to court. This is not people sitting before a jury of their peers. These are business owners that are being told, basically, we don't like those folks and we're going to shut you down for serving them. Wow. That's amazing. You didn't start the fight. You didn't participate in the fight. You shut down when we asked you to. You closed your doors to help bring down the tensions. But uh, we don't know if you're affiliated. We don't know to the level that you're affiliated. We don't know the level of your participation. You got some buds over there and that's good enough for us. You're out, your business is shut down. It's over. That's what's going on. That's what happened to the Papayos. And that's what happened to Central Cafe. So we can see and observe the strength of government, not just federal government, state government, municipal government, the strength of it to use different ideas, things that were meant. Consumer protection was meant to protect consumers from food and uh, foodborne illnesses and unclean premises and things like that. And they morphed that into those guys leaving the parking lot is not safe. <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the, the other stuff they named in this complaint we, we draw a conclusion to that to say that your premises is not safe and we're ordering it shut down. Man, no due process. It's just being ordered to be shut down. And that is kind of amazing. Bikers have to be aware of this kind of... You have to understand what's happening to you. You got to understand that... Um, this is just going to get worse before it gets any better. This is the beginning, that, that, that uh, house of falling cars, the beginning of what's going to happen uh, to every place you have to hang out, to every friend or associate you have. You know, we see folks being pulled over off the side of the road and being detained because of support patches that they're wearing, friend of the club patches, these sorts of things. They're going after clubs in different ways. And they're taking laws that were meant for something else and morphing them successfully into laws that are going to go after clubs. So clubs have to get smart, have to understand that this is a war for club survival. Any clubs that are out there are targeted because the freedoms that we have, the freedoms of being bikers and rolling and riding and having a great time, the freedoms of, of independence, the freedoms of being apart and separate from the norms of what society does, those freedoms are being challenged. Even on Memorial Day, when folks have 
gone before us in our various militaries to fight for the freedoms, the freedoms of, of uh, association, the freedoms of due process, the freedoms of having to be guilty of something in order to be charged for something. Losing the freedom to wear your patch because somebody else wearing your patch broke the law. These are freedoms that are being taken, freedoms of association. Free, uh, this guy is a friend of them, we're shutting his business down. That's what it comes down to. So you gotta be smarter than that. You gotta understand that there is a, uh, a press on you and that press is getting more and more and more successful. So, forewarned is forearmed. That's what my mom used to say. If you know you gotta be five times better than the next person, then be five times better. Don't cry about it, be about it. Figure out what your game plan is to protect the reputations of the MCs to protect their sovereignty, to protect their freedoms, to protect their rights, and to guarantee their futures so that we have bikers and motorcycle clubs a hundred years from now and beyond. Those are the things you should think about on your Memorial Day weekend, the things that brothers fought and died for shouldn't be given up so easily. You should think to yourself, how can I stop this downward spiral? And really that comes to the actions that come from inside you. Every time we have these very public displays, it takes the whole motorcycle world down another peg. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about in the comments. Definitely appreciate hearing from you. Uh, videos like these are very sure to be demonetized, so there are ways that you can go up and uh, help us uh, with your Patreon or PayPal or Cash App donations to the channel. Uh, we definitely appreciate that. Also, other ways to get in touch with us, our other shows, our podcast, um, our other uh, YouTube channels, scroll down on the bottom, so make sure to check those out. Uh, Dragon's Lair, uh, Motorcycle Chaos is the podcast, and we also have a podcast called Think Tactical, so you can see how to get in touch with those things on the scrolling ticker. A lot of times the ticker just scrolls by and nobody notices it, so check that out. And that's my two cents. Thanks for tuning in, and get skinny.